Hey guys, it's Jules. Just sitting here with my stitching buddy. Hey everybody, baby group. And uh, thought I would do a, a stitch along. Um, didn't quite have the guts enough to do this live quite yet because wasn't sure of the setup. Wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to uh, sit and show and talk and all that other stuff. So I've watched a few stitch alongs on, on floss tube, uh, but not a ton. And, and there's also just not a ton out there, uh, depending upon who you follow and whatnot. Um, so, you know, I, I just thought I would try it this way. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stitch on just one piece, but we're going to start with, uh, my Ronnie Rowe and just kind of go from there. And see how far we get. Um, my video camera only can take about 30 minutes of video, apparently. I did not know that. But um, it also might be the, the size of the file. So uh, at some point I might try and cut the resolution down so that um, I can get a longer stretch at a time. But what I may just do with this one is literally just stitch. Um, big piece of hair there. Uh, stitch until uh, you know the file size runs out. And then I may take a break grab another piece and sit down and stitch on that one for a while. So I'm just going to attempt to thread my needle. Ah. I'm the old fashioned wet the end of my floss when I thread it kind of a thing. But you can see, I mean, when I'm doing Ronnie Row, I only use a uh, floss of maybe a, roughly a foot in length, uh, 12 inches. Um, Primarily, it's just, you know, it's for being able to manage it. I, anything longer, and I feel like I end up uh, getting all kinds of tangles and all kinds of problems. So let's see. Let's try to make it so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So um, I think roughly about down to here is the bottom of the piece. Um, I went ahead and gritted some last night just so that I could continue. And I, and I kind of want to just go down the side here. Just so I could get a better idea, just the bottom, it would help me in just uh, kind of figuring out where I wanted to go. And, um, you know, as far as come all the way down, do I do want to do this or, you know, whatever, however I decide to do it. This is a piece that definitely is, um, sorry guys, I'm just going to, and if you guys see me do something, you're like, whoa, you do that really crazy different from me. Point it out to me, you know, this is how I was taught. And I don't necessarily, uh, you know, like I said, I haven't watched a lot of stitch along, so I don't necessarily stitch the way that others do. Oh, thank goodness the second stitch did go there. You'll probably see me frog quite a bit on this piece. Um, let's see. Let me make sure that you guys can see this. Again, just trying to figure out what the best angle is. I've got this crazy... Uh, um, doohickey thing this stand that kind of it's sort of super flexible and it's stand in it and it's connected to the side of my um shelving unit over here sorry i just had to figure out what i was doing next and um i was able to actually attach it pretty close to 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 get the right angle i don't know do, do would you prefer to like be facing me and watching me stitch like straight on. I mean, I don't know. I think that's kind of boring just to watch somebody straight on like that. But if you guys want to see some of that, feel free to let me know. But I'm just going to probably ramble a little here and there. Again, I'm not quite sure what you guys, what you would prefer. From Stitch Mania, I've seen that, uh, most people uh, talk about, when they talk about stitch alongs, they, it seems like they like people to talk their way through them. I don't know if I can, although my husband would laugh and say, uh, of course you can, you can talk as long as you want to. But uh, anyway, so, you know, when it comes to the, the Ronnie Rowe, it's one of those things where I just take one grid, I just do a 10 by 10 grid at one time. And I just go across the row and do what I need to. And then I come back. Ow! 
over and under, uh, or over under on how many times I'll stab myself during this video, I will put it at three, meaning I'll either do it less than three or more than three. So it's probably going to be over, to be honest with you. I stab myself a lot. I had to turn off my fan in order to do this video because otherwise you guys wouldn't be able to uh, uh, listen to me. But um, that's getting a little hot on this side of the house. Let's see, two on four. And because it's a 10 by 10, a lot of times what I'll do is with these pieces, I'll like this next row is one, four, three, meaning I stitch once and then there's a space. And then I stitch four times a space and then three times. And that's something that I've just picked up from doing Ronnie Rowe that has helps me to speed things up a little bit um, instead of constantly looking back at it. And you're going to notice I'm not perfect by any means. I, I'm okay with a stitch not looking perfect. I really am. I mean, if you, you know, if you follow my videos, you know full well that I have all these huge pieces and if I'm trying to be perfect nothing I mean I'm telling you nothing is gonna get done because I just make too many mistakes and I made a big old mistake in the football not big but I made about a 20 stitch mistake earlier today on a football piece where I stitched the wrong color so I kinda left it for now I'll probably frog it out tonight and move forward a little bit but the worst mistake frogging I ever made was actually on, uh, I want to say it was Music Teacher's House, or it, was, or it was either that one or the other, the Williamsburg piece, the Ronnie Rowe piece, where I literally had gotten, I think, maybe a quarter of a page done, if not more, and realized I was off one row. And that, that would have made a huge difference in the piece based upon the, where I was, on the, uh, you know, where I was in the piece. And so um, I... I take all that out. I remember I was on vacation. I was with my family. And uh, it's probably the best place to have to do something like that because I had so much stitching time that I was able to fix the mistake, frog it out, and then fix it pretty quickly. So, like, the next row is one, 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 one. So it's... Ah. My foot is itchy. Always itchy. Uh, one. So it's just one, 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 one all the way across. There we go. Awesome. Uh oh, see? My first tangle. I used to make, I used to have so many problems with tangle. You know, and uh, let me know, guys. It, it, that dog down I can hear a dog down the street um this there's that there's that um I don't know something that you can put on your thread supposedly to is that is that preventing tangles that that I don't know anything about I've never you know I saw some people talking about it this week on stitch mania but I didn't I didn't ask any questions I was just flipping through real quick but um I was wondering if that's what that was about because I'm constantly getting uh little knots and things like that in my in my cross stitch and then one 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 two two one okay this one's gonna be a little bit different because this is gonna go between one 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 can you see the light changing a little bit the uh let's see let me change my light here i'm trying to figure out what's best for you guys well, it doesn't seem like the direct light is really good for you I don't know. We'll see. We're still figuring it out. It's a late afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Should be watching the Broncos games, the Broncos game, but I'm not because they had a, a very extended rain delay and I got bored because I always get bored um, with everything after so long of a period, at least except for cross stitching. Although, no, they're not. I just massage that knot out. Boom. Okay, one, 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 and then two spaces, and we're gonna go under here, there, and here. I put my um, 
and the pattern over here under the camera so you guys can't see that because I can't show that because of copyright rules I don't want to get in trouble and I don't want anybody to take away from Ronnie Rowe designs in any way because I think they're awesome oh man okay Oh, this is a tiny row, so we're going to do this a little bit different. So this one goes here, and then the next one goes here, and look here, yep, there, and this is where it starts to get crazy. So we'll go down here, and this one goes up here. And then here, and this is where I start to get a little crazy. This is where it starts to make no sense what I do. So I jumped across, I didn't go one straight line because that's a waste of thread to go all the way across like that. So I'm always thinking about economy of thread and keeping everything as close as I can. So, but I've gotten to the edge of this row and as I look at it, there are uh, some vertical stitching that I can then progress to, I can then switch over to, because it's just, again, I think of it as more economy of, of thread and, and also time. And somehow just, it's what my brain wants me to do. So I'll show you what I mean when I get this box down here. Two here, and then one at the bottom. I hope you guys are stitching while you're watching, or maybe you're just listening. cool if I could put you to sleep no I'm serious like that would be cool to be like relax someone to the point where they would fall asleep fall asleep to floss tube and all that all the time it's probably the reason why I don't watch as much as I as I would like to or as I should because I literally fall asleep and it's again it's not because it's boring it's because it's just so peaceful and most of the people that I follow are just very mellow and calm and, and it just kind of helps soothe me. Kid down the street sounded like a billy goat. Billy goat. Thought I heard that thought I heard a sound of a billy goat and it was some kid down the street. Uh, there we go. Alright, so I did so I went and did this one vertical. And I'm gonna go back up. I know you guys are uh if you follow the channel, you're probably wondering how the bees did. The bees did awesome. But I think I'm gonna save that story. Because I am gonna, I think what I'll do for the second part of this video is I will do the, the queen bee piece. And you guys can see me with my stitch vision, stitch vision goggles on. Goggles? Glasses. <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right, this is, it's getting, it's getting crazy. It's just getting crazy. Somebody's screaming outside. It's probably Philip Rivers. I'm probably hearing Philip Rivers all the way from Los Angeles. If you're a Chargers fan, I don't apologize. He's kind of a baby. <laughs> I'm wearing my bear shirt today. The bears are just so bad. They are definitely the bad news bears. It has been so hard to be a Bears fan for the last decade plus. Honestly, ever since they fired Lovey Smith, which I honestly was totally fine with. I thought that was the right choice at the time, but then it seems like every other choice after that has been terrible. Okay, now suddenly the lights changed again. Can you guys even see? I don't even know what you guys can see. Let me shift a little bit. I'm sorry if if 
if it's not quite the way you want it, let me know like if there is an area, like if there, if I switch it around, if there is a point where you're like, oh, that's the perfect, that's perfect, that's what, that's that's where I want to watch. You know, let me know. Okay, now I've talked myself to the point of I don't know where I'm at. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Also, part of the problem when you go out a little bit out of order and jump. Because now you're like, okay, now this makes no sense. You've broken all the rules that you explained earlier. Because now I'm doing full stitches. Part of it is I'm getting to the end of my strand. I want to make sure that I try to finish this if I can. And I did not mean to rhyme. I'll do it just one time. I was really excited though yesterday when I was trying to find something to watch last night and uh, while I was stitching and came across the preseason hockey game. And I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, I only watched about five minutes because it was like LA and Vancouver and I'm like, I don't even like those teams. As much as I wanted to watch a little bit of hockey, I'm like, ah, not those teams. Almost done. Rip the box and somehow miraculously it's going to work out to be just about one thing of thread here. Which is pretty sweet. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no, I'm fine. Oh, for a second I thought I either made a mistake or, or I gritted mis mistakenly. So. Alright. For the sake of cleanliness, I'm just going to go ahead and Pop this underneath something over here. Ka-ching. Like my purple scissors. You see my purple scissors? Whoa, hello. Where's the camera? Here you go. Purple scissors. Can you see that? It's not really in the light room. There we go. Good deal. Yeah, I don't have my lighting quite right. I probably should have something. You guys have given me some good ideas on the floor light slash magnifiers. I think I really just need to try them out. I think when I go over to a stitching shop next time, or if they have one set up somewhere around here, I can take a take a look and see if there's something that would be comfortable. Because I, I sit back. I mean, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm sitting up in my little lazy boy up in my bedroom, my little stitchy corner up here. Everybody else is downstairs, thankfully. Oh, it's over the cat, which I actually closed the door so he couldn't come in because... He hardly ever hangs out with me when I stitch anymore, but God knows when I'm doing a, a video, he'll want to sit in my lap. And that would that would not be good. So I use a, a Sharpie, and this is actually kind of a cool Sharpie because it's like a little pen Sharpie. And so I use a, um, a highlighter uh, after every square or whenever I get properly distracted and have to get up or something. And But I just... I just highlight the whole square, whatever stitches I did. I literally just color it in. Gives me a little bit of coloring practice. Uh-oh. Uh oh I can't make this sit up. There we go. It's not visible. Good deal. I have so many highlighters because I've learned that I will constantly lose highlighters. Or actually, half the time, the dogs will chew them up, which just stinks because it gets all over the carpet. Oh, well. When I first started stitching, uh, my first dog, well, of all the dogs we have right now, I know I'm not going to tell you how many we have because it's too many. Um, the, um, he's a little terrier. And I used to give him quite a lot of freedom until he showed me again and again and again in the house that he couldn't really handle freedom. So then he had to start staying in a kennel at night. But before that, I really wanted him to be a cool dog that could kind of stay out all day and, you know, sit on the couch or whatever he wanted to do, you know, and just kind of hang out. And I thought, yeah, that'd be cool. And I was working on my Westminster Abbey piece at the time. And I've had, he's got to be like, 
eight or nine now. I I can't remember. I gotta look up his actual birthday, but he um twice, and I can't believe I actually let him do it twice. That it, there was two opportunities for him to do this, but this was way back when I was kind of on the early end of. It's probably only a couple years into um, stitching, and I was still using wooden hoops. I don't even know if there were like there must have been plastic hoops at that time, but for whatever reason, I think I learned on a wooden hoop 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 hop, <laughs> hoop. So because I learned on a wooden hoop, I just kept you know doing that. And he liked to chew, and he somehow. The little bugger could not, like, he can't climb, so well, he couldn't climb steps or jump up on the couch for the longest time, so I don't know how he actually ever managed to do this, but he would get up on the couch somehow and grab my piece, because at the time, way back then, up until about three years ago, I, or no, honestly, like, maybe a year ago, I always did, I was a solo project person, always a solo project person, I, you know, I had other projects, I have projects now that I had back then, but I didn't rotate through them. I would just, I'd be like, all right, I want to finish this one. And I would just work on it for forever until it was done. And he twice jumped up on the couch, grabbed the wooden hoop, and somehow pulled and destroyed the wooden hoop in such a way that he left the wooden hoop in about eight pieces, but the cross stitch wasn't damaged at all. And I don't know how, I don't know how he managed to do that. But each time, like, I found it and my heart was in my throat because I'm just like, I'm going to have to get rid of my dog, you know, because what am I going to do? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Not so much that. I mean, that was just, that was a temporary reaction to, I can't have my dog. He's going to tear up my cross stitch. Of course, you know, I could have just done a better job of keeping the cross stitch away, but Ah, that wasn't my first thought. Your first thought is never to blame yourself, right? But, um, anyway, thankfully it never got damaged. And when I switched to plastic hoops, nobody ever really wanted to get into my stuff again. So the most trouble I have nowadays is when one of the dogs, um, kind of licks on top of my lazy boy downstairs and gets their tongue all over uh, some of my skein, uh, like my, my bominated floss. And I can always tell when they do because it, it makes it crusty and hard and it looks different. So I'll always know when somebody's been, and usually it's on the floor too. So I usually know when somebody's been messing around with that. And it's always my fault, of course, because I shouldn't just leave it out the way that I do when I have as many dogs as we do. But oh well. This is a weird one. This is a uh, eighteen count Ada. White Ada. Yeah. Oh wow, twenty four minutes in already. That is crazy, guys. I mean, uh, cause part of me is saying I've only done this in twenty four minutes, but it's not too bad. Oh, I can hear my dogs downstairs. Maybe Amazon delivered something. It's possible. I finally ordered uh, the one week Style Works color that I was missing in order to continue work on um, Prayer of St. Francis. So that's good news. I... I finally remembered when I was lying in bed last night and trying to sleep and we were so tired and sore from all the work we had done that day with bees and the honey and when I get 
overly tired. I actually just don't usually don't sleep very well. My body wakes me up because it's sore. And I was laying in bed and I was like, oh, let me just look at Etsy or whatever. And then I was like, oh, wait a second. I need that thread. So I was like, I could probably buy that on Etsy, can I? And sure enough, whoa, sure enough I could, so I did. So, because I always forget. Booyah! If, you're, if you want to ask as far as like, if I've ever broken thread doing that, or I try to, all the time, all the time. That's why if there's a detangler out there that works really well, I would be so grateful to, uh, oops, hello, come here you, to, um, if somebody would tell me what that is. This is kind of fun. I mean, there's no pressure because, you know, it's not live. It's, uh, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Almost missed one right here. See? Always got to keep looking. Always got to keep looking. Miss that thread right there. Or miss that stitch. How about that? So, oh yeah, I was going to tell you guys. So, um... I'm going to repeat myself like on my Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday videos, my weekly updates. I'm definitely repeating myself um, with some of these things. And here I go again. I get almost the way down and I just got to start running down the side. But, um, well, shoot, what was I going to tell you? Mm, almost had it. No, it is. Whatever that was, it is out of my head. Oh, no, no, now I remember. Um, so I had a lot of responses back from folks about the idea of, you know, what to do with these stitch-alongs. And, you know, put it on my main channel, create a second channel, um, you know, how to, you know, all these different things and whatnot. And someone definitely made a comment that was right what I needed. And, um... It was just basically, you know, I mean, obviously you label them different, so people are going to know which one's your floss tube and which one's your stitch along, and they can choose to watch one and not watch the other and not watch both or watch everything, whatever works for them. And I thought, that's about as easy as it gets, and I think that's awesome because that actually just makes it so much easier. And then uh, I can put a few other things on there, like if uh, like you guys want to see some of the B video and whatnot. There is going to be some out. I'll talk about that, like I said, in the next in the next segment. I.e., Julie takes a break because I don't even know why I talk talk about myself in the third person. That's kind of very not me. Um, I take a break to get a drink and wet my whistle and. Grab my other piece. Man, there's a bunch of dogs down the street barking, and they are not mine. Hmm. And the great thing is, is that I'm also not sitting here thinking about sleeping. I'm talking to you guys, even though it sounds like I am. Well, see, I did one of these. Ba bang, ba bang, ba bang. I just pulled that knot out. Oh yeah, I'm having really good fortune with uh, with this. Speaking of fortune, apparently somebody in Colorado won the lotto or something last night. It was not me. I confess, it was not me. <laughs> My husband came in this morning because he does play the lotto every week or lottery or Powerball or whatever it is, and. Uh, I've, you know, maybe two or three times since we've been married, I've, I've actually just got grabbed a ticket here or there, and 
you know, every once in a while, because I like to surprise him with an extra chance and whatnot. And he came in and woke me up this morning, and he's like, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't buy a ticket and not tell me, did you? And I was like, a ticket to what? And he's like, a lottery ticket. And I was like, I, uh, I don't think so. Couldn't quite remember when I woke up first thing this morning. And, uh, and then he's like, well, somebody in Colorado won. So hopefully it'll be somebody who's feeling generous. Nah, just kidding. But anyway. So good good for them. It was out in Grand Junction, which is on the west side of the mountains from like Denver and the rest of us. You have to go I-70 all through all that. Boom. Pause here for no, I'm not pausing. Pausing. I'm just gonna pause to highlight. To make sure I don't show the. Well, oh no, I was showing the pattern. All it does, it looks. It just looks like pixels. It looks like the old scantrons from when we were kids and taking. Is it scantron? Is that what it's called? The old testing methods. But I'm just gonna. I've got a little bit. I'm just gonna go a little bit further into this thing into this thing oh uh oh I dropped it alrighty so this thing's gonna cut off any minute here so I am going to stitch for a little longer and then I'm gonna shut it off and I said, you'll come back and I will talk about the bees and we will work on. All right. Time to work on the second project. I think I have the right needle. It would help if I use the stitch vision. There we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, this thing's a lot more tedious. I, I don't like to word, I, you know, but tedious is good in my book. But it is something that I will go a lot slower on. How about that? That's a better way to say that. Yeah, thanks for coming back for part two. This is my God Save the Queen piece. And it's also appropriate to talk about our experience with the bees from yesterday. And first of all, I just want to thank my husband for his infinite patience with me at times. He is the true expert uh, when it comes to managing the bees. I don't do nearly as much with them throughout the year as he does. He's the one with the really amazing knowledge base about them and um, you know he credits me for getting him into bees but you know and, and the reason why he credits me is because when we were I think it was when we were still dating um, he was a gardener all right let me make sure I did this right this is actually pretty easy this border thing because it's like one two three two one two three you know that kind of thing so this is I don't need the pattern to to work on this particular part but um he loved to garden and he lived in this uh condo and he had a great balcony with amazing sun exposure and he was like in his third i think year of gardening when we met and he would just have all these plants and vegetables and stuff outside but the problem was is that when it when the summer was over and the fall was over and he got all the vegetables that he needed and what now and he took down his, his his garden in the you know, on his balcony, he didn't have anything to do for several months out of the year. And he needed a hobby. He needed another hobby. And I was cross stitching like mad and like I always do. He's like, I you know, I need a I need a hobby and so I actually pulled up a list for him one day, like one of those Google lists said, you know, hobbies for men or something like that. And we went through them and, and I said, you know, I got to a point, I was like, how about beekeeping? 
And he's like, oh, you know, I don't know. And I, and I was like, well, beekeeping seems like a natural extension off of your love for gardening. And it is another, you know, it's another crop that you can bring in. And, and he was like, well, I don't know, you know. And, and we didn't say anything about it. And then I don't know how many... You know, it was four or five months later, and he and he's like, you know, I've been I've been watching some videos about beekeeping, and it's pretty fascinating. And he took a bunch of courses at a local flower place, and like one of those big garden, natural garden places or whatever. And uh, he, oh, I'm speeding up. I better watch it. I better watch it. But he had um try to do it without the I'm sorry for the let's see if I can do this a little better sorry for the shadow I I need to get it rigged up maybe the next time I'll have the light over on that side but it's getting darker outside so it's more the lights in here is becoming more visible but um so he started you know he started taking some classes and he just the more he learned the more fascinated he was and I, I gotta be perfectly honest. I look at beekeeping and I just think it just seems so complex. It seems so like it just didn't seem natural to me. Like I and part of it is it's just I didn't fall in love with it the way that he did. Um, I enjoy it, but it's his it's his true passion. I mean, he absolutely loves it, and he's the one who's been driving our the expansion of our hives and whatnot. Every you know, this is only our second year. This is only our second. Um, honey harvest that we've done we had one last year and it was it was one it was our first hive and we just one hive and it was a very successful first year for those hives I've got a knot no not a knot there we go no problem oh this um this peach uh this is a like a I think a 32 count and it stitches one over one and uh that's yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty it's pretty different from a lot of stuff that I do, but it's fun. Uh, but anyway, so uh, last year in our first... Oh, you guys are already yelling at me. You missed it. You missed a stitch. Here, let's put that in there. Oh. Um, hmm. Sometimes I can't quite tell where I need to go. Because this, the thing about 32 count and anything higher, I mean, the it's not, it's not uniform, you know, it's just not uniform. And that's why I'm not, I don't do these as much as I do everything else. Because I like uniformity. But anyway, so our first year, we had a hive at the garden place where he took his classes. And they had a lot of hives there, and it was a really great year. And uh, we got about 20 pounds of honey from that hive in its first year. And we, were, we had high hopes for that hive for this year because, um, you know, you're lucky to get honey your first year from most of your hives. There's so many issues with bees right now with pesticides and mites and other diseases that they can get that... Um, it's it's been tough it's been tough to be a bee as of late but um you know we we thought well we got 20 pounds our first year we'll, we'll certainly get as much or not more and we also added four other hives well we put those down on a ranch near Colorado Springs which is about 45 minutes south of where we live right now and so, hold on, gathering my thoughts, gathering my thread. So we, um, we added four hives down there and it's a, it was a great location, but it's also just, you know, it's one of those things where it's sort of unknown. You don't know what's going to happen, you know, if it's, if, if the bees are going to be able to find what they need and, and everything. And so it is, uh, one of those things where we were just sort of waiting and seeing how it turned out. We did end up losing... We, we lost the hive at the garden center because, well, actually we don't know, but we suspect it could have been cold, the cold that did them in. As much as we tried to insulate the hive, they do stay in that hive over the winter, and we think they just froze. I mean, the, they didn't run out of food. We had given them, we had left them plenty of honey 
for them to utilize over the winter and there was still plenty of that left when um, we went to uh, you know check on them in the spring and realized that they had that they had gone or they were mostly dead basically and the rest had gone um, so we had to put a new hive in there and when we put the new hive new queen the queen comes with a little, like I don't know like 10,000 bees or whatnot uh oh uh oh got a little knot and I don't know if that one's not gonna come undone because that's a knot unto itself <laughs> it's a knot unto itself um, so we'll just see if we can hide the knot in here somewhere. No, I'm just chit-chatting. Am I doing, am I, it looks like I'm doing everything right. So I think I'll be okay. Boom. I just pulled that right through. It's not going to get pulled through on this next go around. Yep, see, hidden. Perfection. But, uh, so we put a new hive in. And that is the laziest darn hive you ever did see. They have not done a lick of work this year. And how can we tell? Because they didn't expand the honey stores at all. They, uh, I think they went out and they got food and water and they came back and that was about it. Um, it's possible that we put them in there with too much, a, br a fresh hive into a brand new place. You know, a fresh uh, nuke of bees, which is basically like the queen and and then, like, you know, to collect the box of bees, basically. I'm going to go ahead and tie this one off because it's feeling a little, a little short. But, um... They, did, they just did nothing. We were really disappointed in those guys. Um, we're going to actually move that hive. We'd like to move that hive to where the other ones are for next year. Um, just to have them... A different location and stimulate them a little bit but we also just like to have all of our hives in one place so that we can we don't have to drive or oh, my husband because my husband's the one who drives spends a uh, like three three hours three or four hours on a weekend driving around going to the different hives and whatnot so all right so I've moved that one down there and what I'm gonna work on next is just this row across so Let's see what we're on about 10 minutes in. No problem. That video did end up ending um, right after I said, hey, the video might end soon. And sure enough, it did. So I'm glad I stopped it when I did. So I had a little bit of the transition. Ugh. Ugh. I lost lost it. I lost it. Alright, I'm going to be careful here. Did I get it tucked in? I did not get it tucked in. That's okay. Crisis will be averted. And pull. I don't know why I find this. This row has... I've, there you go. Alright, now I'm tucked. I don't know what it is, but this, I think it's the thread I'm using, the light color. It makes it hard to see sometimes exactly where I've stitched. Or maybe I just need even stronger magnifiers. It could be that, too. But anyway, so we're going to move that other hive at some point. So that hive is like a loss. Uh, not a loss, but just didn't do a dang thing this year. We didn't even go check it out yesterday during the harvest because... They hadn't bothered to do anything in the couple weeks. Like, we'd given them, like, a full, like, six weeks to do something. And as of two weeks ago, they hadn't done a thing still. So we were like, eh, whatever. So we went down to harvest the honey. And we had also lost another hive. We have four hives. Um, and so we needed to, to label them so that we would know what we were talking about to each other. Like when my husband would come back and he'd tell me which hive was doing well and whatnot. So we had A, B, C, and D. But we couldn't just leave it at A, B, C, and D. We had to like come up with nicknames. So we came up with Star Wars names. So A is for Anakin. B is for Ben. A is in Ben Kenobi. Um, not Kylo Ren. Not that kid. That kid's a brat. Um, but Ben... Um, C was Chewbacca. D was Darth Vader. Well, Ben, 
as he's been known to do, died. Hope that's not a spoiler for anybody from Star Wars. If it is, I can't believe you haven't watched Star Wars. Um, but, uh, Queen stopped laying eggs. Queen went away. Don't know exactly what happened, but basically the, the hive died because the queen stopped laying eggs. And the bees that are there only live for so long before they die. They're constantly turning over, at least the, the workers are. And unfortunately, that was the end of that hive. So we just, we just left that hive alone. We didn't have anything to do with that. Anakin did okay. Um, we were able to pull out about six, five or six frames. I think it was five frames of honey from Anakin. Um, he underperformed. However, Chewie and Darth exceeded our wildest expectations. I mean, they really, they did because, um, and so when you look at last year, we probably pulled about seven frames, I think, and, um, of, of capped honey. And when I, when I show you guys the honey videos, and I will put that together and show you guys, you'll see what I mean by capped honey. But, you know, both sides of the frame are capped and um, it's just totally filled with honey. And we pulled, um, like I said, seven last year from that one hive. We pulled six this year from Anakin. And then from Chewy, I believe we pulled like 13. And then Darth, we pulled like another, you know, 11 or 12 or something like that. But it might, it, you know, honestly, it's probably even more than that. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was, it was a lot. And it ended up being a lot more than we thought it was going to be. Um, there was a video that I think I, I talked about the bees a few months back, and I explained that the bees were not doing very well in the sense of that was right after we had lost Ben, and it just, you know, it, the, they weren't making extra honey. They just weren't. And a lot of that was because it was hot and it was dry for about two months here in Colorado. And if you don't have blooming flowers and there's nothing to go pollinate, then why go out and pollinate? Stay inside and, I don't know, hang out or, that, or whatever. So there was nothing going on. But then in August, it rained and rained and rained. I mean, it was ridiculous. We got so much rain. And we totally caught up for the year. And because of that, in the last three or four weeks or so, the bees just went nuts. I mean, they just went nuts. Uh... And, the, I mean, apparently, from what I understand, my husband was saying that the um, wildflowers down there just were blooming like crazy all over the place. I'm sure the bees were helping that quite a bit. But um, I think somebody's cheering. Broncos must be doing well again. Halftime, they were up 21-7. So who knows? Um... But anyway, so uh, so they made up they made up all kinds of ground very quickly, which was awesome because we were thinking that we were literally not gonna exceed last year's. We were gonna you know with with well, let's see how many hives that we have this year one two three four four yeah four actual hives that we were not going to do as well as we had done with one hive in year one. But they proved us wrong. They made a comeback. How many pounds of honey do you guys think we got? The way we factored it was we actually, um, we were going to weigh it. And I was like, that's, that's, oh, wait a minute. I'm up to a very complex, difficult spot in my stitching. Because it's, it's I don't know if I, yeah, there's just no way you guys are going to be able to see this, but... You know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot with this, um, I don't even know what kind of uh, fabric this is. I've, I've forgotten right now, but, you know, a lot of times you can see the holes and stuff, but then there are places on this, on this linen where it kind of, it, it's um, put together too, too, too close, so you can't see the holes. And I'm at one of those such places right now, and that, that's why this particular, there we go, I'm just going to choose that this particular uh, 32 count. I try not to do anything that requires tinier stitches. Just not my thing. 
It's not my bag, baby. Um, but anyway, so we had to look it up. We 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 looked up looked it up when we were done. After we extracted everything, and it took hours. I mean, we got home at. It took us about two and a half hours to get all the bee or get all the honey away from the bees, to get there and get back, with everything. Well, no, it took us about three three and a half hours to drive down, get collect the honey, and then come back. And I think we were still working. We stopped working at about five thirty, so about five hours of <clears throat> just pure extraction. Sorry, guys. What I did was I made a mistake with this black part right here. So I undid part of it, I frogged part of it, but I didn't frog all of it, and I left this little strand. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tuck it under and whatnot, because it's just <clears throat> gonna be easier to do at that point. But for right now, it's kind of causing a little bit of an issue, but, oh, I suppose I'll make do. Anyway, where are we? We're about 20 minutes in, good deal. Um, there's a little piece of black that's stuck right there. Huh? Anyway, so we we sat down about a week ago <clears throat> and thought, okay, what's what size jars do we want? How many do we want? Da 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 da. You know, and thinking about what we had gotten last year, not knowing that we were going to have so much more this year than we thought. So we got a certain number of six ounce and eight ounce and twelve ounce and. We're like, and, and my husband's like, oh, man, that's just way too much. And I was like, well, we'll just use it for the following year. No big deal, right? Well, not only did we run out of of jars and stuff, but my husband went out this morning and had to get, like, he got another, like, a dozen, like, 12-ounce jars because we had so much. And then he got home, and then he filled all those up. And then he's like, I got to go out again and get more so it comes out to 16 ounces of honey roughly equals one pound so how many so how many uh how many pounds do you think we got and for anybody who is overseas 2.2 pounds is a kilogram. Ah, I'm at a really difficult stitching spot. I think it's there. We got, I want to say, my husband probably has the official count, but it was something like 70 pounds of honey. That's a lot of honey, guys. 70 pounds of honey. Unbelievable. It's pretty awesome. We're very thankful. It was very thankful for the plentiful harvest. We feel like the bees, you know, the bees were um, beneficial to us and to the land that they were on. And, uh, it, you know, it wildly exceeded our expectations and we're hoping that we can just build from here. You know, personally, I would love it if someday my husband could just do this as a full-time position, uh, just to make, just to make honey. Well, not make it. Obviously, the bees make it, but to run the honey operation. That's a stretch, though. That that requires large commercial facilities. Yep. I can see that I'm done because I'm up to this thing right here. So. Um, so yeah, so, it's pretty cool, pretty cool, but I'll show videos and talk about it, and I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get in there, can you guys see that? There's like a tiny little wisp of a black thread that's in there, let me just skip that spot, go over here, I'm gonna have to try to get that out, but I will say that it is very physical work, much more physical than you might think. Um, we extract the honey, you could almost say by hand, it's, we do use a piece of equipment, but it's cr hand cranked, so 
it's kind of like the equivalent of busting out like 70 pounds of homemade ice cream where you gotta like churn the thing you know the churn the thing um that's better than it was but anyway yeah so that's kind of you know where we're at with that but I'll get into that more in the other video on Thursday I think I don't want to I don't want to spoil that video by talking about it too much here. Let me find my 3021 again. I'm starting to get hungry. You guys getting hungry? My husband made, we cooked up a bunch of hot dogs and hamburgers earlier today. Planning for leftovers. So, I don't know what I'm having. Probably going to stitch more tonight, too. I, um, I spent the morning organizing, pulling out my projects and stuff, and just kind of, um, organizing, uh, getting, like, old world map colors all in where they're supposed to be. I have just stolen from that project left and right. It is crazy. I didn't totally finish with organizing, but I got far enough along that I can definitely work on Old World Map too. Ooh, and the other thing that's tonight is... Ooh, and that reminds me, I need to go down and make sure that I record this, because I don't think I'm going to watch it live. Ken Burns' new American documentary about the Vietnam War. And, um... Let me turn a little bit, guys. Um... I love Ken Burns all his the Civil War documentary, the World War II, the World War One, Brooklyn Bridge, Jazz, American West. I mean, there's so many amazing documentaries that the guy's done, National Parks. Um, you know, so many amazing ones that he's like, to me, he is as valuable to our country as like a Mark Twain not more valuable because he's preserving our actual history. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. So I've been looking forward to this. I'm, I, I'm not a scholar at all of the Vietnam War. I've, I know very little. And I am you know, I'm eager to learn. I know it's going to be a tough one. Because it's just a tragic, it's very, tr you know, all wars are tragic, but I think Vietnam is a lot more tragic than, well, Civil War is probably the most tragic, but um, Vietnam's right up there. Kind of getting to the end of this. Whew, like I said, let me know if you guys are like, God, we should just shut up and just stitch. Or if you say, you know what? Talk about this. Talk about that. I don't know. really enjoy the videos, though. I just wish I would put more effort into editing. I don't have to necessarily edit these videos, really. I mean, I'm going to edit them together, a, you know, to a little bit, but it's it's a lot easier than, than it sounds. I mean, it's really just a couple clicks on YouTube. It's a pretty simple system, but in terms of, like, you know, what I want to do with the B video. We, we took a lot of video when we were down there. And I like to have like a voiceover and some still pictures interrupted with video. And, you know, it's just, I've got some aspirations for it. And, well, that doesn't look very pretty. Hmm. There are some things that I would be okay with. And then that, that I don't. 
when it's sort of a straight edge. 